Hi everyone, so in this tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to draw a chimpanzee in pastels. Now this is very different to the other tutorials that I've created so far because with my pastel pencils I am working just in grayscale. So all of this chimpanzee has been done with more of that black and white effect. Now the reason why I decided to do this is this is a really good way of improving our contrast and paying attention to our values. If you've seen many of my other tutorials here on YouTube, you'll know that I put a lot of emphasis on my contrast. I worry about that far more than I do picking the exact colour when I'm working with my colour pastel pencils. The reason being, if we get our shadows nice and dark and then those highlights nice and bright, the subject that we're drawing will have a far more three-dimensional and more lifelike feel. When we just work with, for instance here, if our blacks were more of a muted darker grey and our highlights were dull, this portrait would have a very flat feel. It would be far more two-dimensional. Now when I'm working with colour, the techniques that I'm using here to really reinforce my contrast purely just by working in black and white mean that I can then transfer that knowledge, those skills that I have really enhanced by working in grayscale into my colour portraits. And working in this way, it really does show that you don't have to work with colour at all in order to create those realistic portraits. Otherwise, the end result here would not look as realistic as it's going to be. And graphite portraits, for instance, would also not look realistic, but that's far from the case. It's all about those contrasts. Now that being said, the colour aspect when we are working with our colour pastel pencils or our pan pastels is important. We do want to make sure we get that as accurate as we can and I do have a very easy method for selecting the colours based on the reference photo we can see in front of us. So if that's of interest, I've got the real-time tutorials available of that process on my Patreon channel along with this chimpanzee which is all available there now in real time. There are no sections cut out, there are no parts sped up and I am recording this with a voiceover while I draw so every single process is explained thoroughly. If this or any of my other tutorials are of interest I'll link my Patreon in the description below. Now one thing you'll notice from this tutorial but also others here on YouTube is that I do like to work in small sections. I personally feel that I don't get as overwhelmed by the process and I also am far more motivated to work through that portrait. Now what I mean by that is if I decided to leave the drawing at this current stage that it is here, I could easily go back to that the following day and jump straight into it because it's already looking like that reference photo. I'm already layering a huge amount of detail here and I'm nowhere near finished. That is way that way of working for me is what keeps me motivated and every day I want to pick up those pencils because I'm leaving it at a good point. Now that being said of course if you are someone who likes to work in set layers so you want to do the entire base layer for all of the subject and then your future layers on top then of course that is absolutely fine. We all have our own ways that we like to work, but if you do feel yourself becoming overwhelmed throughout the drawing process, it's usually because we're working on too much of a larger area. Break that up into just one or two square inches and you'll probably find there that the process becomes far less daunting. So I have a video here on YouTube and it's my top tips for drawing realistic fur in pastels. I'll link that in the description below if it's of interest. But there are a few things that I talk about in that tutorial that I am applying here. So my fur length, fur thickness and fur direction. Now of course when I'm working on the skin here that's a little bit different but I'm really just focusing on that texture. In terms of the hair, the tiny little hairs on the top of the head, I want to make sure that I am following the direction that they are travelling in in that reference photo. You can see how they start to curve over on the left hand side of the head by the ear and on the right hand side it's going to go to the right ear. I have to make sure that I'm curving those pencil strokes that they're not completely horizontal or completely straight because that will make the head look really wide. Here for instance the details on the edge of the head there, the face, you can really see how each detail is curved but they're not all travelling in the same direction. 
Some curve down towards the lower right corner, while others are starting to slope a little bit more to the right hand side. That natural variation is what's going to build up more realism because your details again are not looking symmetrical and therefore flat. So before I move on to the rest of the face, if the tips and techniques that I've shared in this video so far have been useful, I would really appreciate it if you could give the video a like and a thumbs up because it makes a huge difference to my channel. I also upload two to three videos to YouTube every week, so if you would like to get notified of that content, then hit that subscribe and the bell button. Now when it came to drawing the skin, I had a different technique in mind that I used for all of the sections around the eyes and on the nose area. You can see here that I'm barely dotting with that pencil, there are certainly no individual pencil strokes as such. I don't want it to look like hair or fur around the eyes. The technique that I'm using, for instance, on the top of the head and eventually the body are very, very different to what I'm currently using here. Now, when I'm working on this smoother, larger area of skin, you can see here that I'm really layering and mixing my layers to get the desired tonal value that I need. Now, what I mean by that is I'm not using any dark greys at all. For this tutorial on Patreon, I wanted to work with only four or five pencils. I've got two whites, two blacks, and one light grey, the one that I'm using here. In order for me to get my dark greys, I am mixing my black and my white, or the black and the light grey. By mixing the two, as you can see here, I'm adding a thin layer of black over the top. This is giving me a darker grey. Now of course I do have lots of dark grey pencils that I could have used for this but for the tutorial on Patreon I wanted to show how to mix those layers together to create the individual colour that we can see even if it is just in black and white. The way that I would be mixing these layers here would be exactly the same as if I was working with colour. So the top part of the lip here if it was in colour is going to contain some more pinks, some browns and potentially some of those warmer grey colours on top. In order to get those colours there is never going to be one specific pencil that's the colour that we need. We're going to have to mix and layer those colours in order to get that look. And this is exactly the same approach as what I'm showing here. Once I built up the skin and I was happy with that base foundation, that's only at that point where I started adding in the hairs around the mouth. If you add those details too early on, you're going to then have to draw around those hairs if you haven't finished the skin sections behind. The best way of really thinking about this, and this is what I do when I'm working on any drawing, any medium, it doesn't matter what it is, if it's pastels or acrylics, I will always be working with what is closest to the skin first and building up from there. Here we have the luxury of being able to layer our pastels with our light pencils over our dark base layers. So this is one of the best ways of achieving the most depth. If you started off drawing those lighter hairs because that's what we notice first when we work on those areas, then we are going to significantly limit the amount of depth we can achieve in that area because we haven't worked with what's behind those hairs first. If you sort of add the skin later, because you have added in the details too early on, you're gonna make this look like the skin is sat on top of the hair. So obviously that is the completely wrong, wrong way round. We do need to make sure that we are noticing which order of those layers should be placed first. And when it comes to working on this longer hair of the body, this is where the tips and techniques in how to draw fur really come into its own. So I'm focusing on my pencil length, the thickness and the direction of each pencil stroke. Here, because the hair is so much longer than the face, you've got more freedom of movement for those hairs to travel in different directions. It looks like it's a little bit more fluffy, a bit more um, raised from the skin. So I have to make sure that I've exaggerated the curves, but making sure that I'm following the direction of that hair. It's so important in order to build up the shape of the animal's body. Now I chose this reference photo. I loved the expression and I did like the pose as well. The way that this chimpanzee's got his arm and elbow rested on his knee. In order for me to make this look like that, I have to get my lighting right. And this goes back to something that I've talked about throughout this tutorial and the importance of contrast. 
adding highlights or adding shadows where they're not needed will ultimately change what that animal looks like. Now I do speak about this in all tutorials because if your highlights and shadows are positioned differently in the wrong place, it will ultimately affect what your proportions of that animal look like. And again, it goes back to that underlying bone and muscular structure. The, the highlights or shadows, for instance, around the eyes where you've got the eye socket, if you change those placements of either of those, you're going to make the eye or the part of the skull look bigger or smaller, which ultimately means you're changing the shape of that animal's face. So as all chimpanzees are going to have different structures, all dogs or cats are going to have different structures, if you're working with a pet portrait, that person knows what their animal looks like. So that there is even more important to make sure that we get the shadows and highlights in the right place. And because not one chimpanzee is going to look exactly the same to the next, it's still really important to study that one reference photo that we're looking at. It's just one of those things I pay so much attention to because I want my artwork, regardless of the medium that I'm working in, to resemble that photograph, to resemble that animal as closely as I can possibly make it. So I really do hope this tutorial has been useful. If it was, as I say, if you could give the video a like and a thumbs up, I'd be very grateful. And if you would like to draw along to the entire full length tutorial of this chimpanzee, it is available on my Patreon channel now. You get the reference photo, liner and material list, as well as that voiceover while I'm working. So as I say, no parts are sped up, there are no sections cut out. So if this and my other slower tutorials are of interest, my Patreon is linked in the description below. I also do have a Patreon library on my website which lists all of the tutorials that are available on each of the tiers that I offer on Patreon so you can get an idea of what sort of content is available there before you sign up. Now the wonderful thing with Patreon and it's one of the reasons why I love it so much is it's really flexible so you can stay for as long as you like or you can cancel at any time. If you've got any art related questions feel free to pop them in the comments below because I'm more than happy to help if I can and I'm going to be uploading another video to YouTube in the next couple of days but as always thank you so much for watching.